From Hollywood. Catchy, right? I love it. It's the Tom Likas Show. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. I never thought of you of all people. And now. And now. Here he is. Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. Here we are together again on the radio. Look at this story. Daylight Harpersville, Alabama. With his personal and financial worlds crumbling around him. Investment advisor Marcus Schrenker opted for a bailout. In a feat reminiscent of a James Bond movie, the 38-year-old businessman and amateur daredevil pilot apparently tried to fake his death in a plane crash, secretly parachuting to the ground and speeding away on a motorcycle he had stashed away in the Pine Barrens of central Alabama. Now the search is on for Schrenker, who is running not only from the law but from divorce, a state investigation of his businesses, and angry investors who accuse him of stealing potentially millions in savings they entrusted to him. Charles Kinney, a 49-year-old airline pilot from Atlanta, who alleges that Schrenker pocketed at least $135,000 of his parents' retirement fund, said, We've learned over time that he's a pathological liar. You don't believe a single word that comes out of his mouth. The events of the past few days appear to be a last desperate gambit by a man who had fallen from great heights and was about to hit bottom. On Sunday, two days before burying his beloved stepfather and suffering a half-million-dollar loss in federal court on the same day, Schrenker was flying his single-engine Piper Malibu to Florida from his Indiana home when he radioed from 2,000 feet that he was in trouble. He told the tower that the windshield had imploded and that his face was plastered with blood. Then his radio went silent. Military jets tried to intercept the plane and found the door open, the cockpit dark. The pilots followed until it crashed in a Florida panhandle bayou surrounded by homes. There was no sign of Schrenker's body. They now know they never should have expected to find one. More than 220 miles to the north at a convenience store in Childersburg, Alabama, police picked up a man using Schrenker's Indiana driver's license and carrying a pair of what appeared to be pilot's goggles. The man, who was wet from the knees down, told the officers he'd been in a canoe accident. <laughs> After officers gave him a lift to a nearby motel, Schwenker made his way to a storage unit he'd rented just the day before his flight. He climbed aboard a red-riding motorcycle with full saddlebags and sped off into the countryside. Now, a search that began in the air and continued across land and sea has been turned over to the U.S. Marshals. Harborville Police Chief David Latimer said, I believe he's out of the U.S. He's already shown a mentality that's interesting to police. He jumped out an airplane and left it, left it to crash who knows where. He showed a total disregard for human life. I think he'd do anything to get away. At 38, Schranker was at the head of an impressive slate of businesses. There was Heritage Wealth Management Incorporated, Heritage Insurance Services Incorporated, and Icon Wealth Management. He was responsible for providing financial advice and managing portfolios worth millions. And by outward appearances, he was doing quite well. He collected luxury automobiles, owned two airplanes, and lived in a $4 million house in an upscale neighborhood known as Cocktail Cove, where affluent boaters often socialize with cocktails in hand. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Now look where he is. Now we've heard the Bernie Madoff story. Bernie Madoff with about $50 billion, according to authorities. <laughs> It, isn't that, I, I keep saying it, isn't that guy's name a red flag? First of all, you would think it's pronounced Madoff. If he pronounces it Madoff, I think he's sending you a hint. Bernie Madoff with my money! Seriously. <laughs> but uh, you hear stories like, like that story. You hear stories like this story. 
you see all the people who've gotten ripped off. How many of you got ripped off by, you know, mortgage scammers, banking scammers, stockbroker scammers, whatever? You, no wonder they're having a hard time finding people to invest in the stock market. Nobody trusts anybody anymore. I mean, do you have that difficulty when you look around, you know, maybe you've still got a job, thank goodness, 92% of us still do. Have to look at the bright side. 92% of us are still working. So do you come home with that paycheck and you say to yourself, where would I put this money? If I were going to put it somewhere, where do I put it? You know, again, I'm spending the morning watching CNBC this week and there it is again, Citibank. Big honking Citibank. Citibank, which treated me like a speck of dust when I was 19 years old and I never forgot it. <laughs> never went back into a Citibank again after that. That was just me. But here's Citibank. They're selling off 51% of Smith Barney, the big uh, Wall Street broker that they had bought. Because they need money. <laughs> Citibank needs money. I mean, at least you come home every day, you've got a job, maybe you're cash flow positive. You know who doesn't seem to be? Citibank. Citibank. I mean, do you find it hard to trust people? Do you find it hard to trust people you entrust with your money? You know, it's bad enough that uh, now nobody trusts you. When you apply for a loan, they treat you like a deadbeat. When you apply for a credit card, they treat you like a deadbeat. Try to buy a car, they tell you they got no financing for you. Try to buy a house, good luck finding a mortgage. You read about these mortgage rates? <laughs> Many people can't actually get the, the mortgages funded anymore. People can't get small business loans. But really, they don't trust you. What about you? Do you trust everybody? Do you trust these institutions? Has this caused a crisis for you? Have you moved your money anywhere, the money you do have? Have you changed it around? I'll give you an example. I call my bank, which is one of the stronger banks that hasn't needed a bailout, hasn't taken TARP money. I'm one of the stronger banks. And um, they have some of my cashola in a money market account. And I called them up and I said, I want it out of the money market account and I want it in an FDIC, uh, FDIC insured account. I don't care how low the interest is. The interest is low on the money market account anyway. I got nothing to, got nothing to lose changing it over. Move it. Move that money. So even though I trust the bank I've been with for many years, and even though I like the people over there, you never know when you're going to wake up one morning and see your bank on the news. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know when you're going to wake up and see your stockbroker on 60 Minutes. You don't know what you're going to see. It's pretty outrageous. You know, One day you'll turn on Dateline NBC, you know, and there's your stockbroker. Hang on, I'll get you a cup of tea. I'll be right in. Yeah. You just don't know what's going to happen. I mean, do you feel this way? You know, ripped off over the past few years? Lied to? Do you feel like you can't trust anyone? Do you feel like you can't trust anybody who handles your money? I mean, anybody who handles your money. For God's sake, it could be a... You know, the person you're uh, making a furniture purchase from or the uh, uh, the ATM machine or it could be anything. Have, have you lost confidence? Do you not trust anyone? Do you find yourself responding to these? Uh, and I, <laughs> I hear these commercials. They've been on the radio forever on, on, on AM radio stations with conservative talk show hosts. Uh, the ones that tell you you need to buy gold like right away. Right away, you gotta buy gold. Of course, they've been saying that for 30 years in these commercials on the radio, and, you know, gold goes up, gold goes down. I'm saying gold is a, a terrible investment. I'm just saying, uh, in the commercial, it's always a good time to invest in gold, even when it's a bad time to invest. Seriously. Don't get it. I heard the other day on one, uh, um, I was watching headline news, and I heard about somebody, get this one. Somebody bought a new car, and they traded in their old car. And the old car had a few payments left to go, and the dealer said, uh, well, as they usually do with a trade-in, the dealer said, all right, give us your car, we'll give you the new car. 
and we'll pay off your note. And the person was thrilled, and they, you know how easy it is when you trade your car in, you know, no muss, no fuss. You take it in, they clean it up, they fix the dings, whatever, and you drive off with a new car. Only problem in this case was the day or two after the transaction happened, the dealer closed its doors. And when they closed their doors, they didn't pay off the note on this guy's trade-in. So pretty soon, the the lender is coming to this guy and saying, you owe us payments on this car. And the guy said, I don't have the car. I traded it in. The lender says, I don't care what you did. You signed a note, and you're supposed to pay. So I saw it recommended on TV that you not trade in a car that has payments left on it. Or this could happen, because car dealerships are closing up all over the place. And you could end up trading in your car and then not getting the final several payments made. Stuff like that. Do you find yourself not trusting people? Do you find yourself afraid uh, that something like that will happen to you? I, I'll tell you what, I'll be honest with you. I feel that way. I feel that way. And I've taken a number of steps to try to protect myself, but, you know, lots of people have done that, and they still find themselves living under a freeway underpass. So I'm just wondering if, if, if you have that same feeling of not trusting anyone anymore. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. Now with the shortest commercial breaks ever. Taking the calls faster. Taking more of them. Better chance for you to get in. Do it. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to um, hmm. Rob on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. How you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm calling at work, so i got to be kind of quiet. But uh, I heard that, I heard what you said about City Bank, man. Okay, so check this out. Uh, about six months ago, I'd been with City Bank for like a year. There started to be some, like, really mysterious charges on my statements. So I'd go in there, and eventually they are like, you know, $100, $200 just missing, just gone. And so I went in there, and I tried. I, I took my money out. I took as much money out as I could. And then they would tell me that I couldn't close it out because I still owed this and I still owed that. And it was just like, you know, $20 here, $40 there. Every time, I went in like two or three times to try to do it. And uh, eventually I closed my, my account out. And then like two months later, I, w- I got a letter in the mail saying that I had overdrafted and I owed, it, owed like 150 to 200 bucks. Well, I don't, I don't know that any of this is related to what's going on uh, uh, in the uh, market side. Uh, it more has to do with some issues that uh, existed. Do you get your problem solved? Well, I... Yeah, I tried, man, but they, they kind no, of... No, I didn't. You, 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 I said, did you get it solved? Is the answer no? No. Wow. In the sense that I get my... Did I get the money back that... Right. No. Did you get an attorney? No. Why not? Because I'm a broke douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> I'll accept that as an answer. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Ron on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom... Yes. How are you? I'm doing great. Great. Hey, have you seen the commercial that says talks about precious metals and gold is at an all-time high? And go through your jewelry. We'll send you a prepaid envelope, and you send. Yeah, you send that into us, and we'll send you a check. Yeah, I I have seen that. (laughs) Could you imagine? Yeah, they'll give you money. They'll give you pennies on the dollar, right? (laughs) That's exactly right. Well, right, we're like, who knows? You're going to let them decide how much the jewelry is worth? I mean, I, if I'm taking my jewelry in, I want to take it in personally, look the guy in the eye, have him tell me how much he thinks it's worth, haggle with him. Don't you want to haggle with the guy? <laughs> Precisely, Tom. You got it. Hey, and then, you, and then you, and you want the right to say, you know what? I'm going to take it somewhere else. Exactly. Yeah, you, and you have no record on the value of your jewelry. They'll just say, oh, it's worth 10 bucks. There you go, buddy. Absolutely. <laughs> you, 
You take care, Tom. Thank you. Appreciate the call, Ron. 1-800-5800-TOM. In the middle of all the scandal, uh, the Bernie Madoff scandal, uh, other scandals, people committing suicide who lost their uh, uh, client's money. I mean, do you find it hard to trust people? Do you? Joe on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, Tom, how's it going? I'm doing great. I got a question as far as uh, trusting people. I had an uh, investor call me, and I don't know if I could say the, the name of this company on the air. But no, wait, what would that serve? What purpose would that serve? Uh, you don't need to name the company. Just tell the story. Okay, well, uh, it's a, uh, he wants me to invest in a, in a cement company that does about 14% of the country's cement work. And uh, in lieu of Obama's infrastructure plan and uh, and all of that, you think it's a good idea? He's to trying to ahead? sell you stock in this company? Yeah, yeah. Now, who is this, a broker who's trying to sell this to you? Yeah, and I did research on my own about this certain company he's trying to sell me stock in, and um, they consolidated all of their debt and all of that because they're getting ready for... Uh, you know, a big blow up in, in concrete and all this, and it's at about 10 bucks a share right now. What do you think about that? Well, first of all, I'm not a stockbroker. I'm not a certified financial planner. I don't have that kind of uh, specific expertise on a specific stock. So I wouldn't recommend or not recommend a specific stock. What I would tell you is you should proceed very cautiously right now uh, when it comes to stocks. I, I mean, I'm not saying you shouldn't get into the stock market, but but you're in over your head. You don't know what stocks to invest in and which ones not. Well, and the fact that I'm pretty green at the whole stock market thing, so I figured I'd run it past you and see what you thought about, you know, uh, how it all ties in together. As well, far as I, I think somebody like you should be investing in, in mutual funds slowly. Okay. I, I don't believe that people like you should be investing in uh, uh, stocks you don't understand. Haven't you learned anything from seeing what's happened to everybody else? That's why I'm, that's why I'm a bit apprehensive, you know. Well, then you shouldn't be a bit apprehensive. You should be completely apprehensive. Uh, the, the fact is, you don't understand it, and now you're calling me, a complete stranger, to ask me about it. That proves you don't know enough about it. If you don't know enough about an investment, don't make it. Uh, that's what I. That's what I needed to hear. And then I have one more question for you. Yes. What is your, what is your understanding as far as the bailout went with the banks and the banks trying to keep uh, these people in their homes that are like fifty percent? Uh, I'm opposed to it. I'm oppo You know, uh, at the very least, I'm opposed to anyone who had a, a stated income loan getting any help, especially if it can be proven that they lied about their income to get the loan. Right. But I don't see any effort to ferret those people out. No, nor do I. But I mean, I think the first thing the government ought to do, the first thing the government ought to do, is to get the names and account numbers of everybody who has a stated income loan. And then to compare their application for the loan with their 2007 tax return. And if the income on their W-2 forms doesn't match up, uh, with with what they stated, those people should be allowed to be booted out of their homes. No help, no bailouts, goodbye, see you later, you're a fraud. Why doesn't someone have the balls to do that? I, I, I think they should do that too, but I did go stated, but I and I did back it up with my with my tax returns. And uh Well if you were able to to, to, to back it up, why did you need to get a stated income loan? I didn't, because I didn't want to put down, it was a huge loan in wine country, and I didn't want to put down the huge down payment. So that's why I chose to go stated, and and because it was quicker. All right, but you didn't lie. No, 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 I didn't lie. I didn't lie about my income at all. You lied about your balance sheet. Uh, there was nothing that they asked me for as far as numbers went that I lied about. What do you mean as far as numbers? Right? You're, being, you're, you're putting a, 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 an asterisk on every sentence you're saying. What what did you misrepresent? Let's let's cut to the chase. I didn't, I didn't misrepresent anything. Where my problem was is 
is I bought in 04 and it was fixed at 5% till 06. Uh, once it went, once my arm changed, it went from 5 to uh, almost almost uh, 11% in 18 months. Why so did you I, sign up for a loan like that, pal? Oh, it didn't. It obviously didn't tell me what my what my arm was going to be. Why, so, why would you sign for a loan where you didn't know what the interest rate was going to be going forward? Because, uh, because you're a moron. And you don't deserve to be bailed out. <laughs> it goes on. It goes on based on what the market is going to be at, at that, or the interest rate is going to be at at that time. So they can't really forecast it. <laughs> Why would you get into a loan where you can't forecast approximately? I mean, for example, many arms have caps. They can't go above a certain rate. Oh, I knew. I knew my cap, but I but I wasn't aware that it would go straight from five percent. All the way to my and, and by the way, nowhere was uh, nowhere was eleven percent the uh, prime interest rate or the long term interest rate or the short term interest rate. You just got uh, you you just got uh, screwed. Is what you got, and you let it happen by letting it be this big X on the contract. Unbelievable. Tom, I'm on a toll road, and I'm getting flushed, and this girl's boyfriend doesn't even seem to care. Oh, baby. Oh, my God. What's that like? Tell me. Oh, my God. She's, she's climbing over this guy's lap in the car while he's driving. They should honk their horn so we could hear them out there. Oh, let me see if I can get up closer. Open your, open your window there, Dave. All right. All right. Let's see, see, here. see if they'll honk their horn. Oh, my God. Hey. <laughs> it's on the Tom Likas Show. Tom Like His Show, now heard six days a week, Monday through Friday from 3 until 8 p.m. Pacific Time. Saturdays from 2 until 6 Pacific Time. On 97.1 FM Talk and at blowmeuptom.com. Sundays from 5 until 7 Pacific, it's The Tasting Room with Tom Likas. You can't go a day without hearing us. I'll tell you what. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. And I'm just trying to find out if uh, you find yourself not trusting people in the financial business, seeing all the things that have gone on now. Seriously. It's 1-800-5800-JOB. It's Jason on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, what's going on, brother? Uh, not much. All right, well, here's the problem I'm having. I'm 25 years old. I have a good job. I have all my stuff paid for through work, health insurance, disability. And a friend of mine came up to me. His friend's a financial planner. He said, uh, why don't you go talk to him? You know, he's good with investments. He can get you a life insurance policy. So, so, so in other words, this person is an insurance salesman, not a financial planner. Well, he's a certified financial planner, but he does sell, you know, health insurance, life insurance. So don't I, you I see that be... as, do you see that as a conflict of interest? Yeah. So, so I think that answers your question. Pretty much. But the the question that I have for you was, is it a good thing being 25 years old, not having any kids, not being married, to even have life insurance no. at my age? No, not a good thing. Uh, I do not have life insurance. Okay. So you would say you would recommend it only for people, even though you tell people not to get married, but it if you are married and have kids, it's the only reason really to have life insurance. Or and, and even then, only if you don't have money. Right. Because I mean, you seriously. You set me up with investments and stuff like that. And I just didn't know. That's another question. That is, with the with the economy the way it is right now, is it a bad time to invest in the stock market? Because he's saying that it's a good time because it can only go higher. But I'm saying, how do we know if it's going to go higher? It is a good lower? time, but does he uh, collect a commission uh, if he uh, recommends oh, yeah. investments? Well, see, then, again, that's a conflict of interest. If you want to see a certified financial planner, I think it's a great idea. You need to find one who charges you a fee and who does not sell life insurance, health insurance, flood insurance, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, or anything else. Somebody right. who, will, who will have an unbiased look at what you need and recommend things that are based on your needs and not based on what they need to sell. Right, and another thing is that he's trying to get he, he tries to get people to work for his company too. I'm, I'm not going to say the name of the company, obviously, but it's a major company, and he's trying to get people to work for him. He makes you know money off of us, and it's just like I, I just feel like I, what's this guy's name? Wanna... Bernie Madoff. 
I'm sorry? What's this guy's name, Bernie Madoff? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who that is. But, uh, you haven't yeah, heard about Bernie Madoff? Oh, oh, boy. Yeah, so I just, I my recommendation, you, you you seem to smell a rat here, and you're right to smell a rat here. Uh, by the way, hiring a financial planner, a certified financial planner, is a good idea. But never buy anything from a financial planner, ever. So you want them just to charge you? That's the best way. They to charge not have you a fee. Money. That's right. They charge you, you. You they charge you a fee, which you can negotiate. And then you pay them for advice. And then you take the advice and you act upon it on your own. Great. I really appreciate that, Tom. Is there any way, I don't know if you guys still have this in your book, but is there any team out Rex Hudler stuff? Rex Hudler style? You mean like a bong hit? Uh, yeah, it was something where he got caught at the airport and you guys had something, but not a lot of people asked for it. I don't remember Rex Hudler style. I do remember that Rex Hudler got uh, busted at the airport in Kansas City with uh, weed in his suitcase. Which I don't, I don't think I've ever done that in my life, but uh, no, we can just give him a bong hit. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number, Rex Hodler style. Let's say hello here to uh, my goodness, Dave on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing okay, Dave. Hey, if uh, we're getting screwed over all the time, you know, because it's out of our control, what can we do for investments that are in our control? Like, I I have around ninety to $100,000 to invest, but I don't want to do it in the stock market just because it's so, you know, sketchy and I'd like to do it in something else. Is uh, real estate the way to go or what's well, the way to go? Uh, well, first of all, the best investment you can make, the best is in your debts, paying them off. Mm -hmm. Let me explain why. If you have a credit card that charges you, let's say, 10% interest, mm -hmm. there are very few investments that are going to get you 10%. Right. So, essentially, you are going to, uh, you're buying an investment that's going to pay you 10%. Mm -hmm. So, the first thing to invest in is to get your debts to zero. Right. Have you done that? Yes. Well, I saw, okay, so you have no debt at all? No. Good. Okay. And uh, how much money do you have put away? It's it's between ninety and a hundred thousand dollars. It's a it's a new inheritance, and I'm just wondering what I can put it into without you know kind of controlling it on my own. Well, I can tell you that um, first of all, do you have an emergency fund, the FU fund we always talk about? Oh, of course. How much do you have in your FU fund? Uh, it's about 20000 All right. And how much would it cost to live uh, uh, for the 12 months? Oh, I, I just rent right now. Um, it's probably going to cost about, I don't know, 25000 So you don't have 12 months of money in your FU fund? No. All right. Well, first thing you do, you got to do is you got to get your FU fund up to 12 months of living expenses. Okay. That's number one. Number two... Uh, what you want to do is you want to put your money in a relatively vanilla location. Don't play the stock market like it's a casino. One good place to put your money is in an S&P index fund, which is a fund that uh, uh, simply invests in the companies that are in the S&P 500. Now, these are America's biggest most well-known companies. In my opinion, the companies least likely to go out of business. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. When you invest in an S&P 500 fund, you're investing in, you know, ExxonMobil and McDonald's and GE, all the biggest of the biggest. Of course, oil companies are doing very good right now, obviously. Well, oil companies have been up and down because the price of oil has been up and down. Right. So I'm recommending to you that you get into something diversified, which the S&P 500 is diversified, but you're diversified among large capitalization companies. Okay. All right? And these are big, big, big companies, the biggest of the big names. Some that couldn't go under? Mostly. I mean, look, we've seen amazingly big companies go under, AIG being an example. <laughs> Citibank we're hearing about. Yeah. Okay, but the SP five hundred is more than just financial companies, right? It's all kinds of companies. They're just big, big right. names. 
The thing is, if you're invested in the stocks of 500 companies, if two of them go out of business, you haven't lost much. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I got you. Now, every drop in the economy is followed by a stock market rally, but it could take a year or two years or three years. This is why you don't want to put too much in at one time. Right. Okay? You want to start with a basic amount. Maybe, in this case, the minimum amount to start the account. I don't know what that is. Let's say it's $2,500. And then you want to continue by putting a certain amount of money in every week or every month. The same amount every month. Automate it so you don't look at it. Don't be tempted by what happens in the stock market or what happens in the economy. Just keep going. I want you to know that um, I'm not just making this recommendation. I do this myself. I have continued investing through the drops. Right. Because I believe in the end there's going to be a big stock market rally. And it could be as far as two years out. Mm -hmm. Warren, Warren, Warren Buffett, about? Warren Buffett, one of the richest guys in the world, has been buying large quantities of stock, depressed price stock in big companies. Mm -hmm. If he's buying, I'm buying. Right. How do you feel about um, buying homes and renting them out to people and then flipping them at the end of the bad, bad. I, do you have a degree in real estate? Do you know about the real estate business? The answer is no. 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 Haven't you learned from what happened recently to people who were doing that? Yeah. No, you haven't because you're still asking that question. Right. I got you. No. Stay out of businesses you don't understand. Okay. Just stay out of them. By the way, the flipping business, you know, the price of real estate last month in uh, Southern California dropped again to over 20%. Mm -hmm. What do you know about that business? Not much. Then why would you get the idea to get into it? I guess not anymore. Okay. Stick with stuff you know and stuff you understand. When you don't understand, when you invest in a mutual fund, there's a manager who manages the fund. And by the way, all they invest in is the S&P 500. So if the S&P 500 goes up, your fund goes up. If it goes down, your fund goes down. That's the way it goes. All right, Tom. Well, thanks a lot, buddy. Hey, thank you. Tom, 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom, 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. Tom like his show from Hollywood at one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning again. So now you read all these stories about all these people ripping off investors, depositors, people committing suicide. I mean, do you trust anyone anymore? What do you think? Carlos saw on the Tom like his show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Yes. Yeah, my name is Carlos, and I have a very important question for you. Yes, sir. I need help, uh, so that is why I'm calling you. I have a, a real estate company who is going to charge me $500 to make a modification on my loan. And I called to another office where uh, they charge me $4,000 to help me with uh, with the lawyers or with the attorneys to make my payment uh, come down as to what it is right now. What can I do? Well, uh, first of all, uh, do you have an attorney? No, I don't. Okay. Well, I think you need to have an attorney to ask this question because it's above my level of expertise. And I, I got to tell you that uh, uh, I imagine what you're trying to do is get your interest rate lowered. Yes, it's what I'm trying to do, but uh, my 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 uh, interest is very high right now, like uh, eight or nine percent. Yeah. So the lady who who I talked to today, uh, she told me that with four thousand dollars they can help me. Let me ask you a question. To, how is your how how is your credit, Carlos? Do you have good credit? No, no, my credit is not good because I haven't made the payment for the last. Almost three months. Oh my! Okay. So that that means that my credit is, you know, is is off right now. It's, it's bad. Right, right. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people out there, 
and I'm not saying they're all like this, but you have to be careful. There's people out there uh, who, for example, will charge you to do something that, that you might be able to do for free or for next to nothing. But, but you really need an attorney to talk to about this. Um, now, have you ever dealt with an attorney before for any reason, like a car accident or uh, an inheritance or, or for any reason at all? Well, well, see, this is my main question. Is it that they have the power to make the bank uh, try to help me? But that's my point. I, I'm telling you it's a question for an attorney. Uh-huh. And you need to hire an attorney. You don't have to spend $5,000 on an attorney. You could just go in for 15 minutes and ask this question. I see. And I, okay. recommend, I recommend you do that. Okay. Because the amount of money you could save by getting a modification on your loan... Uh, would would easily pay for the time with the attorney. See, because it, right now, because a lot of people they are losing the properties, they, they, there's a lot of you know males on, on, on you know yes. and home that there are a lot of uh, different uh, offers that come to you. But yeah. uh, really, it's not easy for me to, which way to go. That is why I'm calling you. Right, and that's why I'm telling give you. Give me some good information. Hire an attorney. There are attorneys that charge as little as fifty to a hundred dollars an hour, and if you see a hundred dollar an hour attorney for fifteen minutes, that's twenty five dollars. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can see an attorney and ask just one or two basic questions, and it will be worth it. Okay, yeah, because uh, to me, in the this kind of situation that I have, to uh, spend four thousand dollars with. Uh, some kind of bureau or the lawyers or uh, the I, attorneys. I would, I would a, not do. I would not do that uh, before you talk to an attorney. Have an attorney look at whatever you're 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 considering and let them tell you what to do. That's the way I would do it, Carlos. Good luck, Brian, on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Great. Hey, I had a, one quick question for you. I uh, hope you can help me out. Uh, I'm 19. I'm turning 20 next month. Uh, my girlfriend uh, is 21. We've been together since high school. We don't have any kids, any dad, or anything like that. Well, may um, I ask why you need to have a girlfriend? Uh, I knew you were going to ask that. I, I don't have a real real uh, answer for that. Do you always do things without having a good reason for doing them? No. <laughs> why do you do but, this? Um, I love her. You know, she, she's been treating me well. I, you know, but I but you you could get treated well down the line when you're a little older. In the meantime, uh, you could be, for example, uh, focusing on your studies. What college are you attending? Um, I actually got a um, associate degree in uh, in information technology. I've been. Um, yeah, but you've got no job in that field, right? You need to go to college all no. the way, and you haven't done that. No, I haven't. But why I, have, I have Why uh, haven't you done it? I'm getting, uh, my dad owns a chain of tanning salons, and um, they're being passed down to me. Uh, so pal, I have, pal. I'm going to take over the family business. Let me, ask you, let me ask you just a theoretical question. Let's say we go into a depression. Yeah. How many people do you think are going to be going to the tanning salon? Yeah, I, I know that. It's um, possible, it, just possible, that your dad's business will go out of business. That's very true. So you need to make plans for you. And that means you need to go to school. Stop making excuses, because the real reason you're not going to school now is so you can spend more time with your girlfriend. Well, that, and I'm not really sure on on if I should pursue a, a degree in you know in, in information technology with computers, or you know go go about like a, a business route. Um, you could you could have one as a major, one as a minor. You could have a double major. But I would definitely, I wouldn't delay going to college because you can't decide which to do. Yeah, I just finished. I just finished my associate. So I, I mean, I'm taking. This when did you stop. finish in May? What's that? When did you finish in May? No, I finished in, uh, in December. Okay. Finished my, and do you know what college you want to attend? Um, I'm not accepted to Cal State Long Beach. All right. Well, have so, you have you applied? Yeah, I did. Um, I'm. I'm probably going to, if I do anything with college, it's probably not going to be till next semester. So All right. Semester well, that's where started. you need to be going. You need to be going to college. Now, you had a question that had nothing to do with college, don't you? Yeah, um, and you're probably going to disagree on, on that also, but I, I'm going to take my shot at it. Um, she has a family business as well. Um, it's a very good business. Um, she's in the, um, I'm not going to discuss that, but she's in a very good business uh, with her dad. And, um she makes a lot of money. Um, the business isn't successful over 25 years. 
and um, we were looking at buying a house um, right now with the prices dropping. Um, you know, you don't have the money to. You do not have the money to buy even half a house. You don't have it. Oh, okay. You don't have it. Well, my W two, my W two last year. I mean, with her, with her, uh, her pay and my pay, we qualified for two hundred fifty thousand. First of all, who's selling houses for two hundred fifty thousand dollars? Well, that's what I was calling to, to talk to. There's um, in the area I live in. There's three hundred thousand dollar houses, and you know we're yeah. What kind uh, of neighborhoods are they? Lakewood. What kind of condition are they? In? They're. Probably forty thousand. Uh, Why do you houses. need to own a house? Well, was, that was my question. I'm asking you. Why do you need to own a house? Well, I'm young and and I'm I I get paid pretty well. And that, that, but why do you need to own a house? I was trying to make a, a good investment early on. It, houses are. Do. Let me tell you something about houses. Your residence is a terrible investment. It's one of the worst investments you can make. Okay. You buy a house because you love it and you want to live in it forever. Yeah, that's, that's what the we're no, 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 you're not going to live in a 250 or $300,000 house in Lakewood forever. Wouldn't you want to move up in the world if you made more money? Yeah, but I mean that's my point then you're not talking about living there forever. You're talking about buying a house with your girlfriend. Yeah. You're not talking about buying a house you love in a neighborhood you love and will live in forever. Well, I've grown up I've grown up around Long Beach area and I you know, I like the area. There's not I mean the Lakewood are, is not Long Beach. it's the same area. <laughs> Dude. You don't have the money. How are you gonna pay for college? Well I have I have uh my dad, my dad, my dad's been paying for my schooling, and uh, I've been, you know, I'm the one running the three tanning salons right now. So, but you don't have the money. You do not have the money to buy a house, to maintain it, to pay for insurance and property taxes. You're in over your head. You're a teenager. The Tom Likas Show.